but this is actually part two of us putting some details on this guy. Girl, girl, she's a girl spider. Girl spider. She's definitely a girl spider. Dude, she comes with, she came with an egg sack, so. Which I don't know if I want to paint. Let's just leave that out of it. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go and talk a little bit uh, on detail work, on how to do it very simply, very easy, and to really clean up the model to make it look a lot better mm -hmm. than just putting on one color to another, to another, to another. So mm -hmm. the first thing that I like to talk about is the my personal way of painting miniatures has always been in a three-step process. I will do my main coat, which is what we've already accomplished in our previous video. And then we move on to um, the highlighting and a little bit of dry brushing, um, in which case um, we're kind of scheming out where we want to put the highlights and yeah. kind of make the miniature pop a little bit better. Yeah. Um, in case you guys are wondering where we are filming, we are filming at the master or over at uh, King's, King's Table. King's Tabletop Lounge. Yep, in uh, Redding, California right it's our now. our local game store. So if you hear people walking around or anything else, uh, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lively place at yeah, or, times. Or if you hear the door go off, the door just went off ding dong when people walk in. So anyway, we love all of our nerdy friends here and it's just so fun to be able to be here and film and paint and yeah. All right, so with that, um, let's move on to our color scheme. So you were saying that you want... I was thinking this green would go it's really cool with like this dark, deep purple color. All right, so you're wanting, are we thinking fangs, feet? How, how are you wanting to incorporate this? I was thinking like streaks on the back somehow, like some kind of interest, intricate design on the back. And maybe like along the, like, sp like spots along the legs. Um, and then maybe uh, the under under the chest in there, in All there right. too. Do some green in there, and then maybe like do a different color for the fangs, like an orangey. Fang so color. so let's get um, let's get to working on the fine little pattern you want to do. So have you figured out a small little pattern you're thinking maybe on the well, back of it? I was looking at the picture on the back of the model, and they had like some streaks there that looked kind of cool. But I was thinking maybe something like with squiggly V's. A okay. couple different squiggles. Like a couple a line. different squiggles. Like and I think that could be cool. Yeah. Be cool. So if you did three lines, you did the, the one that's in the middle um, as this one. And then we, we switched it up to a, a little bit of a darker green on the other two on the outside. And then we go back to the moss for the, the mm -hmm. dots or maybe even the lines um, you can do in between the joints. Um, as the moss. Maybe something like that-ish? I don't know, I can't really draw Ooh, very well. I like it. All right, well, well here, let's here's, let's let's just go, let's go for it. Okay. So you're gonna shake up your paint um, and create your, your first lines. So I would use this brush. It is a fine brush. It's got about three literal, oh, it does, very, but... very, very, okay. you very, very, very You can't even see it on fine. camera. You can't even yeah. see them on camera. Um, if you're gonna be doing drawings or anything mm -hmm. like that on your minis, you want a very small, very detailed uh, uh, okay. brush. Yeah. I'm All right, so here you go. Here. here, I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera real quick so you can see what she's doing. Ooh. Okay, how's that? All right. Well, I don't like, I love the color. You will have to get thicker. Yeah. And it's kind of just the tip. So you're just gonna do that and then go back in for another one. Cause it will, it will dry out really quickly off that brush, but you'll have more detail. Is that too much? Nope, don't be afraid. Okay. And then you just very lightly are going through and making those lines that you want to create. And anybody that knows about like birthmarks or stuff, they're never perfect. So it's okay if it looks a little odd. In fact, it might even help with the model itself. So, do we want to keep one streak and then kind of fade it out on either side with like a darker green, or should I do like a whole series of? I think a series. A series of, of streaks. A series okay. of streaks. Really, right. really cool. And you're gonna go in for some more mm -hmm. thick 
and yeah, fix and that do, up. Yeah, and I'm gonna do another one. And I'm gonna do another one on on this side over there, so it's it's even. Yeah, I think the purple the purple mixed with this particular green is gonna pop really nicely. And when we do some more highlighting, it'll clean up some of these uh, yeah. these areas that look a little rigid. Okay. Ah! Now it's only paint, it's not rocket science. And Remember to breathe. And when you make mistakes, you can always go back over it with your original colors. So it's generally why you do a first coat of, you try to do, in more complex things, when there's like m multiple different colors you're wanting for your first overlay, um, we, we do a thing called blocking, where you're, you're specifically only painting certain areas uh, first, and then so on, so. But with this, it's a lot easier, because it's just all the same color, and then we're gonna be building from there. There we go. There it is. What do we think of that? Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad for first attempt. I'm gonna make this one a little more wiggly then. Cause it looks, it looks very geometric. Boom, boom. All right, so that's yeah. one detail that we've put on. So now you're going to, we're gonna clean off this brush. And then what you're gonna do is you were talking about uh, highlighting in different areas as well. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's do the, uh, the joints okay. um, with the same color. Okay. So you're gonna do, There's there should be two joints per leg. So you've got the small joint here and then you've got the center joint here in the middle of the leg, each okay. leg. So you're just gonna circle around each one of those every, okay. on all of those. Okay. And this small little detail work, like I was saying before, is going to help in the overall um, just quality of the model itself. So this guy now has a few dots on his legs. Hey, didn't that, what the, that was what we were wanting, so. You know, a few dots other than, you know, the circles. But you know, mother nature is a hot mess anyway, right? <laughs> have you ever seen a spider? Have you ever seen an animal that didn't have just like massive motley random spots on it? We all have freckles, everybody's got a freckle. Yeah. You have one like right there. Do I? Yeah. Don't be pointing out my imperfections <laughs> on the camera. That's a horrible idea. So my spider now has a few green freckles. I might have to paint them over. But oh my goodness. Oh. How long did it take you to like develop a really steady hand? Mm, like a year. Oh, okay. It took me a year to figure out like how to really ah. maintain a yeah. solid... But it also comes with just confidence. Like the more you yeah. paint, the more muscle memory kind of takes over a little bit and okay. you just get a lot better at it. So a lot of people that are like, oh, I can't paint, I can't paint, I have no hand. I'm like, yeah, you probably don't right now, but you, yeah. you can get better at it. There you go. Oh, is. Let me zoom it in again. So all right, here's what I'm uh, doing. Ooh, it's a little blurry. Oh, there we go. Here's what I'm doing on the legs right there. And 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 there's a freckle on this antenna now, but nice. We won't talk about that. Maybe I'll give Jinx a birthmark somewhere. Like, oh, when you get like when, under her fur, right? Yeah, so yeah. that you know when she transforms into a spider. Sorry, my husband just showed up and I got very distracted. <laughs> As you can tell, we're exceedingly professional in everything that we do. Yeah, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> it's not helping, but I'm getting a little lightheaded. <laughs> there are certain times where I'm like, I just, I can't reach into it. And if I can't see the spot, if I'm rotating the model, if I can't see where I'm trying to paint at all, I'm not going to even paint it because it's just so difficult to get into some of these nooks and crannies. I'm glad I'm doing this with Greg because if I wasn't doing this with Greg at this point, I would just like splatter green all over it and call it done. But um, yeah, I feel it. I feel encouraged that I have a professional model painter with me here. Professional is relative. Okay, an experienced model painter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the green dots all over the legs. I think it's stylish, okay? Um. Pro tip, 
when when you are doing a uh, miniature painting a really good thing to do is to have uh, q-tips uh -huh. and uh, you you get you can get the ones that have like a fine tip to them um, and you just soak them into to water and you can get rid of it um, with that I'm gonna show you okay. how you how you get rid of it when you don't have one so that little mess up right there you're gonna water up and you're just gonna scrub it out with water make sure you clean it up otherwise you'll have a residual amount of that weird color on the model which well yeah hey it looks so much better yeah see I mean it's 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 yeah uh, you know it's cool it's looking good it's looking I'm not okay. Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting I'm there. I'm really liking where you're going with it. Me too. Yes. All right, so we're gonna fast forward, come right back. Well, no, we haven't decided on doing that. Oh my goodness, we're filming. Hello. <laughs> I was, we can cut this out. It's fine. <laughs> no, I like it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, so this is part two of part two of the spider painting video because we ran out of time last week, and so this is a brand new week. Yep. And we have different clothes on. And I tried to find the same shirt because I was thinking, you know, I could make it look sort of similar, but the, my, I hadn't washed it yet. And it not, no. I didn't definitely want to didn't want to do that. Didn't so. want to, yeah, didn't want to wear a dirty shirt. So you look very nice, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, okay. I tried. So anyway, this is part two of spider painting. So um, last, last time we had, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you had decided to go with a purple spider mm -hmm. and to give him kind of these stripes and dots of this uh, neon green, which I really like the concept. So we, um, just off, off camera, we cleaned it up a little bit. Greg um, cleaned it up a little bit. All transparency, I, it didn't look this good when I did it. We cleaned it up a little bit, getting rid <laughs> of, uh, going back over it with the purple um, on any spots where we saw like just the lines not matching up right or, um, and then trying to getting the consistency that we wanted on the, the belly and, and all the other places for the neon. So it's important to clean up your model as you go um, to make sure that you have the right colors. Um, yep. And displayed. So we're going to be moving on to um, painting the eyeballs. So we're going to do that with this yellow color. I was actually thinking orange might be cool, but we I couldn't find a cool orange that I really liked in that paint. We might be able bucket. to do like a um, a but. dot in on the eyeball after putting the yellow on. But Ooh. basically, you're going to cover. So you're going to cover the entirety of the four eyeballs there. Okay. And then we'll move on to uh, maybe doing the fangs. Yeah, we're doing fangs. Yeah. We're also doing some dry brushing, and we have to we have to paint out that base. So. So first things first, we're going to do the base real quick because okay. it's really cool, really fast, really easy. Really fast. Uh, we're going to go with a simple brown tone and then we're going to dry brush. It's brown. Uh, we're going to dry brush on top of the rock layer okay. to give it a uh, weathered look of rock and uh, debris. Alrighty. So. So. Here we go. Okay. 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 So I'm going to take control of the camera so that you guys can see a little bit better. Okay. Of what we're doing. Okay. Yes, excellent. We look to Don't be afraid to get a little bit of water in there too. Oh yes, water. To all spread right, that everybody. around. Oh, yes. Okay. And just spread it all around everywhere on the base. This is the right. first coat, so it's okay. doesn't need to look the prettiest. All right. Trying not to get it on this little this little clear piece in there. And I'm also trying not to paint my face or my nose by accident as well. This has um, occasionally happened. It does. It yeah. Has, yeah. So tell us in the comments below, what is like the most epic mini you guys have ever painted? I want to hear from you. I want to hear, even feel free to send us pictures. Oh, I would love to see pictures. We would love to see pictures. I am always inspired to do a new mini when I see other people doing it. Because I think to myself, wow, I can do better. Or I know I can never do that good, but I still want to try. Okay. Or if you're new to mini miniature painting, you've never painted a miniature before and you're interested, what do you want to start with? What was the very first mini you ever painted, Greg? I painted an Oni. What um, is that? Which, so an Oni is a, um, it's an evil uh, creature okay. that um, can polymorph. Um, it has the ability to change its shape. 
Mm -hmm. um, they make excellent villains. Onis are like super cool. Not only can they change their shape, but they can go invisible at will. Mm -hmm. So they basically That's can cool. go invisible as a cantrip as many times they want, all the time. Mm -hmm. They can stay invisible if they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, they usually um, uh, make good villains because they're exceedingly intelligent. And so mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll polymorph themselves into um, weak old people on the side of the road, or um, they'll uh, polymorph themselves into a politician, take the guy's place, and uh, be able to, um, you know, do their deathly deeds uh, through a position of power that they achieved through uh, manipulation and deceit. I'm trying not to get any on the spider in here. Because we don't want to re-clean it up again. Oh. But you're doing good. It's fine. Um, you, you, that brown does look a little bright, but it mm -hmm. actually dries um, darker. It will dry darker? It will dry darker. And um, additionally, when we, uh, we put a wash to it and yeah. we do a dark wash to it, it will even darken it up even further. So don't Pardon. worry about that. Inevitability. It yeah. happens. I don't know if you guys can see all the faces I'm making right now. I'm making quite a few concentration faces. So is this technically like, this isn't one of your first paintings, right? No. You've, you've painted minis it's before. It's one of my first Dungeons and Dragons mini paint minis. Um, I actually started with Warhammer figures. Um, because I was interested in getting into a new hobby, so I went to my local game store, and um, the owner of the game store was like, oh, hey, you want to get into Warhammer painting? Um, that's a good hobby for you. It's very involved, very in-depth, very creative. So um, he actually pulled out, like, a whole, like, box of Space Marines and just gave me, like, five Space Marines and paints and stuff and just let me start painting. Nice. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I painted an entire, or not an entire, but I painted like a whole little squad of Space Marines. Um, that was my very first painting. And then um, I was going over to my friend Alex's house for a Dungeons and Dragons session, and he had a bunch of unpainted minis um, in a box that he wanted painted. And I think it was like a Horde's army. I actually don't remember which army, which Horde's army it was, but it was from War Machine, not Warhammer. And, um, it had like double-headed wolves, I believe. I don't actually remember because I never really got, I played more War Machine a couple times, but I never actually got deep into War Machine, um, even though it does sound very cool. And so I painted his army while we were playing Dungeons and Dragons because the game kind of moved a little bit slow at times. So um, I would just sit there and paint his minis while we were playing. And so then, so then I, painted, I, I painted an entire Horde's army. That's so awesome. Pretty much while we were during that campaign. Uh, I'm sure you used a lot of red. Um, actually, it was like silver. It was like a snowy. It was like a druid horde. Really? Yeah. So I oh. used like silver and green. It was like wolves. It was like wolf monsters. That sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. I think of the horde. I think of green. Yeah. And I think of red. Yeah. Those two colors. That's, that's generally what I think of. I I personally have never gotten into. Forty K as a game, but I definitely buy the miniatures because I like painting them. Yeah. Uh, some of the best plastic on the market. Period. Um, it's very very easy to paint. All right. Looks like you're almost, almost done with the base. Done. So anyway, yeah, this is my first miniature that will be used for Dungeons and Dragons that I've ever painted, and I'm very excited about about it because I actually I love Dungeons and Dragons way more than I love Forty K and. Um, War Machine, I'm sorry. Sorry for those hardcore War Machine fans. But I love creating the story of Dungeons and Why? I just oh painted no! The, well, he's got some dirt on him now. I have uh, Q-tip things, I think. Okay. Let me just put this down. I'm gonna pause. Cause we are... All right, we're back and um, just finished up kind of prepping, prepping the fangs a little bit and um, about to do the eyeballs. It's a little hard to tell, it's a little hard to see, but um, once we get the eyeballs on there, you'll see 
pretty, it'll, it'll, it'll look good, trust me. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you're doing the eyeballs here, um, you're gonna want to put a little bit of water on your paintbrush, then wipe it off. Um, I didn't do that part. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I did it for you already a second okay. ago. Um, and then you're going to spread the paint around, not pressing too hard on the eyeball, because if you press too hard, uh, it's not going to, um, it's going to give like weird lines and stuff. So don't be afraid to have a little bit of a more paint than you think you should on the paintbrush tip. Okay. So that you kind of just fall it on into place. For these specific eyes. There's different ways to do different types of eyes, but these are a lot easier. You're literally making dots for the most part. It looks better, yeah. I got one. Got one out of four. Man, I, you, it's funny, you think you have steady hands until like you have to paint really small details and then like they're shaking all over the place. And I'm like, wow, I had steady hands a moment ago, but all of a sudden I don't because I'm so concentrated. It happens. That looks pretty awesome, by the way. This? The spider? Yes. Thank you so much. Hey, and uh, Gracie? Yeah? Let me know when you guys are at a spot where you're not filming stuff that can be taken out because I might throw something on. Okay. If you guys are just doing time lapse or whatever. Yeah, we'll totally let you know. By the way, we're filming this in our local game store. We've got lots of friends around who love chatting. Oh. Look at her. Here's all of our friends. Sorry, Derek over oh, there. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. We love our friends so much. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, that's looking great. Yeah. That's gonna look so menacing in the, like, oh my goodness. I wish we had glow in the dark paint. Yeah. Oh my God, that would look so good. All right. Um, so I can so I can have this on my shelf and then like walk out in the middle of the night like scream like crazy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay. No. Okay. That's, so, like, that's the goal. In my, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. What are we doing next? All right. So now we're going to be moving on to the dry brushing of the now mm -hmm. with this particular uh, method. Why don't we uh, look at the camera? Please. With this particular method of dry brushing, mm -hmm. um, let me just move this a little back. Um, it's obvious the words imply that your brush should be dry, not wet. So you cannot use a brush that has already been wet. Uh, you need to use a dry brush. Um, so uh, there are some people that, that don't mind using their wet dry brush. I don't recommend it, especially if you're not used to dry brushing. So it's better to just grab a new brush. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and put paint on the brush and you're gonna take about 90% of it off by using a cloth and kind of dragging it back and forth on the cloth until you have about 90% of the paint is gone off the brush. And then you're gonna go and lightly go over the surface. And what I mean by lightly, I mean you take your brush where you're wanting to dry brush and you just barely hit the surface. You do not press with the brush ever. Blue. This this is gonna be a one bright spider, but at the same time it's gonna be very dark and weathered. Um, so yeah, um, let's pick a brush here. I want bright, colorful, and menacing. But I'm guessing this is probably gonna be a good brush. Yeah. Um, that you can use. So go ahead and shake that up. Have you have you guys ever noticed how like the brightest colored spiders are always like the scariest when you see them in your garden or on your plants or outside? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like if you see like a brown spider, you're like, ooh, that's a brown one. But if you see one that's like got all these crazy markings on it, you're like, oh my god, it's gonna kill me. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think about that as uh, frogs as well. Yeah. Like there's a lot of frogs in like the rainforest that are literally so deadly that you know you touch them and you you they just you're gonna die yeah. but they're so pretty like mm -hmm. they have all these little dots and they're different colors mm -hmm. and stuff and so it almost like entices you to pick up the dang thing to die i don't know that's what i think anyway yes maybe in a zoo yeah maybe, maybe in, a, in zoo. a zoo maybe in a frog petting zoo dude that would be cool like a deadly animal petting zoo <sighs> the waivers you would have to sign Oh my gosh. The amount of waivers. They have poison gardens. I've heard of these gardens that people can grow and they're poison gardens of like all poisonous plants. But this this is like an on another level, like a poison. No, thank you. 
like a poison animal petting zoo. Nope. 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 You that, don't want that, to die that, today? Nope. Sounds or awful. Tomorrow? But it sounds like a great idea for a concept for a D&D &D thing. Yeah. Yeah, right. so ninety percent of the paint is off, so I did and that. then we're we're painting everywhere that it, there's purple. Oh god! So you're not painting on any of the neon green. I'm gonna and start just dry with brushing. The leg. Okay, how's this? Looking kind of cool. Yeah. Too dark. You want to give light? you want to give it that back and forth look off the tips. There you go. Back and forth like this. Yes. Okay. Let me see if I can. Without putting my elbow in anything. Get it closer. There you go. That's what you want. And that's that you don't want it any brighter than that because we're gonna be doing a second later because we still want to see that purple. Right. A little bit more. Uh, you will be constantly going back to your paint, okay. taking stuff off, and then dry brushing, putting it back to your paint, dry brushing. Um, it's a time consuming a thing to do so we're gonna we're gonna pause right here and come okay. back to the finished first dry brush okay all right here is the um final product it doesn't look that different on camera does it it does though it does, though. It, it does look it does. much better we're gonna be doing a wash on the miniature which is going to darken the colors and it's going to go into the crevices that you can't see very well mm -hmm. and kind of shadow it and give it a natural shadow yeah. so literally all you're gonna do do you want to show them what wash we're using i am using um, a citadel wash mm -hmm. i'm using a nil uh citadel wash which is basically a black uh wash um i like this one it's the one i use most often i've probably i think i've gone through like four of them already oh wow um through all of my minis and different things that i've painted so i'm gonna just start it off and then I'll let you finish. Okay. So you're gonna use a, I like using a wide brush um, and you don't want to glob it too much, but you're going to be generous with how much you put on and then you're just going to go over the mini with the brush and this already is looking freaking fantastic. That is looking very creepy. Um, they also, like, uh, washes also help to seal the paint um, so that it it, uh, it stays on uh, and doesn't chip as easily as well, so. This looks awesome. Wow, yeah, it's looking good. I think these were good choices. You made good choices on your coloring concepts. This is, uh, it's coming together like just gorgeous. This is definitely not a spider you want to see in the night. And I still think if we had glow in the pit dark paint, uh, <laughs> this would have been very interesting. That would be uh, amazing to scare my husband with with glow in the dark paint, and then just like put it right, like put it right by like the the bedside clock or something, or put it right on top of the bedside clock or something. So I like when he goes think to bed, you night, yeah. Oh man. Uh, there, speak of the devil. <laughs> I just came through the door. Oh, you just got off work. All right. So go ahead and uh, finish up the base okay. with this. With the same wash? Same wash. Okay. Um, we're going to put this away. And then after that is done, uh, she's going to show you um, how, it, mm -hmm. how it has changed the way that the model looks. Get a little bit more. Get a little more yeah, yeah, yeah. And finish that up around the base. The base yeah. And it's good that it's going into the crevices like that. That's what you want. So like a little bit of glob is not a bad thing on the base, especially because you want it to. You really want it to fill in those crevices that um, you know gives it that illusion of depth. There we go. It is looking terrifying, um, but yeah, it's it's coming out just right. Mm -hmm. So now we just right. gotta wait for it to dry okay. um, before we put the last um, touch on it. Okay, so 
I'm going to go hug my husband while we're waiting on that to dry, and we will see you guys in a little bit. All right, right back. So, everybody, this is our final step on the spider, right? Yes, final, 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 step on the, okay. final two steps. We so we're gonna add blood to the fangs. We are using this paint called Blood of the Gods right here. <laughs> it's some cool stuff. It <laughs> is very, very thick paint. Um, so you have to be, you have to work really quickly because it dries very fast. Um, so just be careful when you're using it. You might need to test it a few times before figuring out how it, how it works. But uh, I've already gave Gracie a little bit of a rundown, so she's gonna put it on the fangs real quick. All right, everybody wish me luck. All right, so it's kind of gloopy, so you want to get like a good glob, is what he said. Uh, drag it down to, to the tip of the fang. Yep. Normally they only spawn within 22 blocks of you. Yeah, that's it. You don't want to touch it too much. Bloody fangs. But those fangs look awesome already. I, I love it. That's it. We have completed this. Um, overall, it wouldn't have taken us that much time if we were, you know, not explaining. Um, this this size of a, a, a creature probably would have been done in about an hour. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we might have had about an hour worth of video. Yeah, for sure. I think it sure. might have actually taken about that long. Yeah. So anyway, we love you guys so freaking much. We love you, Guild Links. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. All those things. Yes, please yes. show us some love. Hit the like button for us. We love you guys. We love you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.